Hey guys, how's it going? The Buy-In King here. As most of you guys know, I recently went to the Arkamoto FUV and Friends Summer Showcase in Oregon. I wanted to make a video recapping how this whole event went for me and my overall thoughts about the event. So this event was held at the Portland International Raceway in Portland, Oregon, and I'm not from the state of Oregon, so I actually took a... I had an Airbnb and I took an Uber to get to the Portland International Raceway. And the Uber I took started asking why I was going to a raceway in the first place. And so I told them that I was going to an event of a three wheel electric vehicle company where they're doing test drives and some sort of showcase. And so this guy was actually taking an interest into what the event was about because in the past he used to drive an ice cream truck and apparently his past ice cream truck was a three wheel vehicle. It was a gas powered three wheel vehicle, it wasn't electric. So he was actually interested in what was going on and if these vehicles were fast and I'd never driven one before so I couldn't tell him for sure. But once we got to the raceway and he saw all the Arkimoto's lined up, he was actually pretty interested in them. And instead of picking up his next Next ride, he stayed parked there for a little while and started taking pictures of the Arkimoto's, which I thought was pretty cool because I thought they looked cool lined up there too. I started walking around at the event and started taking videos and looking at all these sweet vehicles because they look so much more beautiful in person. I'm telling you guys, I mean, when you look at them on videos and pictures online and everything, it just doesn't compare to what they look like in person. Like if I wasn't at the Arkimoto event and if I saw one of these in the wild, I would definitely approach the person driving it and ask what this was all about and, and want to drive this thing. I took a walk around and looked at some of the vendors. They had Arkimoto merchandise there. They had a vendor for Faction, which is a company that's working on making Arkimoto's pretty much like a remote control or maybe even like autonomous later on in the future. There's another company there called Stoffel Systems, which actually the founder of Stoffel Systems used to be CEO of Arkimoto before Mark Frommeyer was. And they're working on a software iteration of the Arkimoto where it pretty much gives the Arkimoto power steering capabilities because anyone that's driven an Arkimoto knows how tough it is to turn the vehicle when it's at a dead stop. Tilting Motor Works was there, which is an acquisition that was made by Arkimoto, which is essentially a modification where you can add a third wheel to your two wheel motorcycle and gives it the ability to tilt and lean when you're driving it. It pretty much gives it the feeling of driving a two wheel motorcycle while being a three-wheel motorcycle and safer in that regard. It was pretty cool walking around because you got to see people that you see pretty regularly in Arkimoto videos or um, any sort of release that Arkimoto puts out where uh, I got to see the CFO of Arkimoto. I got to see some of the great team members at Arkimoto and that was really cool to see when I was walking around. At one point, I'm pretty sure I saw the founder of Tilting Motor Works, he was hidden the whole time, like he wasn't, you know, in the spotlight or whatever. I never saw him go around and talk to people, but I think I saw him in some sort of racetrack suit, hidden behind this like little palm tree thing. And one of the team members that I ran across was Mark Frommeyer, which is the CEO and founder of Arkimoto. And he was standing with some of the presenters and he was sort of going through the game plan of how the presentation was gonna go. And I was just standing there with my camera. I'm like, can I be recording this? Is this confidential or what? And so I was just standing there recording it and nobody told me anything. So I guess it was cool. So while they were talking, Mark was going through the topics of the presentation. And at the very end, Mark said, and then there's gonna be one more thing. And so I kind of butted in and I was like, did you say one more thing? And this is what Mark said. Did I hear one more thing? What's that? Did I hear one more thing? One more thing. <laughs> and pretty much like any other casual meet and greet that you go to, obviously the governor was there. Yeah, pretty crazy. And I wasn't expecting to see the governor of Oregon herself, Kate Brown, at this event. It was pretty cool that Mark invited her and they were just kind of doing an interview. I think it was even off camera. Well, besides me recording them talking a little bit, it was off camera. I didn't see anyone recording for her, but she was actually asking questions as if she was um, curious about Arkimoto as the company and the products that they have there. So that was pretty cool to see that Arkimoto has the attention from their state governor. And obviously I couldn't pass up the opportunity to take a picture with the governor of Oregon. So I did. And the picture with Mark Frommeyer and a picture with Sandy Monroe. Yeah, Sandy was there. I know, crazy, right? It was 
crazy to know that he was there. So while Mark was explaining how the whole presentation was going to go down and everything, he even said that they were going to get a few words from Sandy, but I didn't know if that was Sandy Monroe or some other Sandy, and I was just like, what was Sandy here? And at one point, I was standing around just like, you know, admiring the event, and I turn around and Sandy Monroe is standing right behind me. And I'm just listening and talk to this one guy about engineering because obviously once you get Sandy, you started talking about engineering, there's no end to it. But yeah, I got to share a few words with Sandy Monroe himself and I got to take a picture with him. It was funny because he, he got on his tippy toes to take the picture. I guess I'm a little bit taller than him. And then I crouched down a little bit, but I just, I thought that was funny. And actually Sandy Monroe uploaded a short little hype video about this event. And I'm in that video. You guys can check it out on his YouTube channel, which is called Monroe Live. Shout out, Sandy, you gave me this. Thank you. And then around 10 AM is when the actual presentation started, which we had a few speakers such as Mark Frommeyer, Kate Brown, the governor of Oregon, Sandy Monroe got up and spoke for a little bit. During this presentation, Mark was pretty much recapping everything that Arkhamoto's accomplished, everything that they're aiming to do. More in a broad sense, he didn't go too much in detail or whatever, but he, it was pretty much a celebratory thing about, look how far Arkhamoto has come. Here are some things we're working on, and those things included a flatbed version of the FUV, which is pretty much in partnership with, I'm sorry, I forgot the name of the company, but they provided the Arkhamoto with an extendable flatbed, which you can carry a lot of stuff on. I was pretty impressed with all the stuff you can carry on there. So Mark pretty much alluded to, but didn't want to say directly that FUV was going to be coming out with a software update that pretty much fixes the dry steering, the stiffness of the steering of the FUV uh, in conjunction with Stoffel systems. And then Arkhamoto introduced a remote controlled Arkhamoto which can one day become an autonomous FUV because supposedly Arkhamoto is already about 80% of the way there to pretty much turning the FUV into an autonomous vehicle according to uh, Faction CEO. I hope that Arkhamoto releases the video of this entire presentation because I'm pretty much going off of all of this from memory and because I didn't record the whole event. My camera does, didn't have enough battery life to cover the whole event, so I didn't record it all. The demonstration that we got of the remote controlled FUV didn't really impress me that much because the FUV at most was going about one mile an hour. Uh, I never saw it turn a single time and before it really started ramping up, I heard the person behind the driver's seat saying that it was human powered now. It's technology. <laughs> At this point, the teleoperator has control of the vehicle. And so they're in charge of steering, braking, everything else. And all the commands from the computers are going wirelessly to the vehicle and then talking to the Stoffel drive-by-wire system to actually control the vehicle. All right. So like he had taken over for the remote control, but somebody posted in a Facebook group that I'm in for Arkhamoto of the remote control feature actually working later on in the event, which I didn't stay for. So if I find that video, I'll put it in here. And that one more thing that Mark was referring to earlier was the hard doors on the FUV, which is something that FUV owners have been requesting for a while now. People want these half doors. They're not full doors that cover the full entrance of the vehicle, but they are halfway that cover, you know, pretty much from your body downward it, enough for you to kind of feel like you're enclosed in the vehicle but missing the window pretty much so that pretty much concluded the presentation and then after that they moved to test drives on the actual race straight we got to see the arkhamoto team take the first lap around the track to pretty much welcome everybody to the test drives and then after that we all got in line i was one of the first in lines i had to be i could have missed out on this opportunity so i was one of the first in lines and not to knock Arkhamoto on this, but it did take me a while to get my butt in that seat, even though I was maybe like eighth in line or something like that. It took a while just because maybe they were walking people through how to navigate the vehicle. I definitely wasn't part of the first heat of people to go in the vehicle. So I don't want to knock Arkhamoto for this because it was a huge event. And from what I hear, this isn't as 
they were not expecting this many people at this event but there was quite a long wait for me to get my butt in the seat of an Arkimoto, even though I was only about eighth in line. It seemed like maybe they weren't that well prepared for the amount of people there or how to really line them up or who goes into what vehicle and when and how to make that work smoothly. Maybe later on in the event they figured that out, but I, I didn't stay for that. I only stayed for one test drive just because the wait took so long. Uh, I wish it would have gone by faster. But once I did get my butt into the seat of an Arkimoto, uh, it was pretty simple to learn how to drive. You just put the car in drive pretty much and then you twist the throttle on the handlebar to give it some gas and then you got the regen brake and you got your foot pedal, obviously. There it is. 
there are those driving skills. Awesome, and then you just want to put it in neutral and put the parking brake on. I've got to say, I was really looking forward to this test drive besides the fact that we were only allowed to go up to 35 miles an hour on the racetrack, which I get. Maybe the Portland International Raceway didn't want the liability of someone getting injured, taking too sharp of a turn, going way too fast, and now they've got a lawsuit on their hands, or I don't know why the reasoning was because of that, but I'm pretty sure that there was a reasoning. You know, me going to this event, hearing that it was gonna be at a raceway made me think that, holy cow, we're gonna get to go fast or this is gonna be, you know, a cool experience getting to go fast in an Arcimoto. But they capped you at 35 miles an hour. Not that there was some sort of like limit on the odometer and it stopped you there. They were pretty much going by the honor system. There was a moment where I floored it on the FUV and I went from about like 30 to 40 miles an hour pretty quick and it felt really good and I just wish I could have gone to experience it going to 50 and 60 and the 75 mile an hour cap which is supposedly the fastest speed you can do on an Arkimoto even though when I was in line I heard an Arkimoto owner saying he said that his record on his Arkimoto was 84 miles an hour so I just wish that we could have gone a little faster on these Arkimotos but hey I guess that there was a reason why they capped us so I'm not going to be too hurt about that so after waiting as long as I did, I didn't really feel like getting back in line, especially because I was only about like eighth in line and there had to have been at least a hundred or so people in line at that point by the time that I was done with my test drive. So I wasn't trying to get back in line and I didn't know if there was anything else on the agenda for that event or not. And I was pretty hungry. It was close to lunchtime and I also wanted a nap. I'd already gotten the full experience and it was cool and all. I wish I could have gone faster on the Arkimoto, but I was happy that I got to meet Mark in person. I got to be there in person. I got to meet Sandy Monroe. It was cool for me. So I was content with that. So I called up the Uber and I went back to the Airbnb and I took maybe like an hour long nap. When I woke up from that nap, I'd gotten word from Mark from Meyer that there was gonna be a after party at a certain hotel in Portland. I didn't know if it was sarcasm or not or whatever, but I'm like, you know what? I got time to kill, why not? Like, let's go. <laughs> so I got on Uber, I went to that hotel, I showed up and wow, was it cool just showing up at the hotel. There was a little outdoor area and it was just like Arkimoto fans and the Arkimoto team and even Sandy Monroe just chilling there. People just hanging out. And I couldn't believe that I was at the same party as Sandy Monroe. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Sandy Monroe, you know? What can I say? This is the guy that pretty much re-engineered Tesla with the Model 3 and pretty much saving Elon Musk's butt when it came to production hell with the Model 3. And he's just a genius. And I can't wait to see what he's gonna work on for Arkimoto. I think it's gonna be brilliant. and. And during the presentation, Sandy Monroe said that he believes that Arkimoto is going to be a massive success. So I'm optimistic to see what he's working on with Arkimoto. Mark showed up a little bit after I did, but it was pretty cool getting to talk to him in, you know, a scenery that wasn't an uh, event where it was just an after party because he's really cool, uh, really nice guy, really genuine. You wouldn't think that he's like the CEO of this really popular electric vehicle company. And obviously he's composed when he needs to be, but at the party he was super laid back and super just like a people person, you know? I talked with some people, I met some really great fans of the Arkimoto, some shareholders of the Arkimoto, and I met this guy named Adam Hewitt, which has a blog where he talks about Arkimoto. And we just started talking about why we like Arkimoto so much and pretty much our vision for Arkimoto and our experiences with the team and everything like that, which was really cool for me because I had been in Portland for two days at that point and I hadn't really met anyone from Portland yet. So it was really cool talking to people, especially like-minded people, you know? And I was telling Adam about all these visions that I have for Arkimoto and how I've worked on a redesign for the Arkimoto just because I like to meddle with things. And I was telling him how I believe that the website could use some reconfiguration, 
and that maybe Arkimoto can take a better stance on the whole user experience of the product and the whole experience of purchasing the product and getting to know the team and the product. And I was spilling my passion and all these design ideas that I had and he's like, dude, we gotta get you to meet Matt and Kartik. So Matt is the event coordinator for Arkimoto and Kartik is actually a new hire for Arkimoto. It was his second day on the job the day that I met him and he was hired on as a user experience designer, which is right up my alley. That's something that I really enjoy is designing for the best optimal user experience. So I met these guys and they were super chill, pretty much around my age. I think Matt was around 27 and Kartik was 22, something like that. And I'm 24, so it was really cool. Adam, I forgot, I don't, know if I asked for his age but he was around our age as well and it was really cool just talking to these guys and because knowing that they work for Arkimoto and I'm over here with my ideas and I'm just expressing like certain things and seeing them nod and being like yeah that's the direction we think the company should go in as well and it was super chill uh, me and that group of people we left the party we went to get some Mexican food in Portland all the while Matt is telling us all these funny stories at Arkimoto, uh, telling us funny stories about Mark Frommeyer, and apparently he says bruh a lot, like he calls everyone bruh. But it was just a really chill time, shout out to those guys. Thank you Adam, Matt, and Kartik, you guys showed me an awesome time when I was in Portland and I'll definitely be going back. We walked back to the party and at this point it was maybe like 10 p.m. so I decided maybe it's time to head out. So I went up to Mark, shook his hand and he said, He's like, bruh, bring it in. You know, every handshake eventually turns into a hug or something like that, I forgot what he said. So I said my goodbyes and everything and I told him I'd love to come back. And he's like, well, when are you leaving? And I told him I'm leaving tomorrow. And he's like, oh, dang it. Cause he said that apparently they're having like uh, an open house for their factory where they're, you know, giving people tours of the factory. Uh, I'm assuming letting people drive their Arkimoto's and I wish I could have stayed another day if I didn't already buy my round trip ticket. I wish I could have stayed for that. That would have been awesome. Thank you, Mark, for the offer. Uh, I really appreciate it, man. Next time I go, I'll definitely keep that in mind. I'd love to take a tour of the facility uh, and maybe check out the new facility, you know, the R-A-M-P, the ramp. I'd love to see that. Also, it'd be super dope if maybe I could get hooked up with an Arkimoto so I don't have to be using Ubers all the time. I'm just saying, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> oh, and I forgot to mention that they gave me this poster at the event. It's number six out of 50, just so you guys know it's got some value, okay? So that was my experience at the Arkimoto FUV and Friends Summer Showcase at the Portland International Raceway. I'm so happy that I went, even though I don't know if I met anyone else that also flew in from out of state. I'm sure that there was because there was plenty of people there, maybe around, you know, close, a lot of people. I'm glad that I got to go and I will do my best to go to the next FUV event. Thank you for having me, Mark and team. See you guys next time. Peace.